Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and in this video I want to look at how you can free up resources in your computer whilst you're recording and mixing. What we have right in front of us is t rax version of an LA-2A compressor. It's a classic piece of kit and a real one would cost you well over a thousand dollars. You can buy one today off the IK Multimedia website for 80 euros. Now that's great, it gives us a reasonably good representation of a classic piece of kit for a fraction of what it would cost to have the real thing. And for your 80 euros you don't just get one, you get as many instances of it as you need for the particular mix that you're doing. The real price comes when you consider the level of impact that that has on the performance of your computer. And I want to have a look at how you can easily get yourself into trouble and then show you a way around that. So, so we'll get rid of that little graph and we'll get rid of the compressor as well because that's not what I want to show you. What I have loaded up here is the song that I've used for a number of videos recently but I want you just to have a look at the total amount of memory that the virtual instruments that I'm using have consumed. Now this is before we add in any effects. Now I've got a lot of guitar tracks on this which have been recorded dry and are going to need reamping. So there's going to be an additional requirement for processing power to deal with all of those. And in a future video I'm going to look at a way around that where you can go from recording to mixing and virtually reset your computer. But let's come back to today. So we have Easy Drummer, which is using 325 meg of memory for a fairly straightforward kit, the Americana kit. We have Contact, which is using 7.3 meg of memory for a simple clavinet. So we are already up to a total of 330 megabytes. Not a lot, but then we have a look at this and everything else dwarfs by comparison. This is the Session Horns. This is a fantastic uh, virtual instrument. It's a recreation of an entire horn section, but it's using a whopping 1.32 gigabytes of memory. I have a backup computer which completely chokes on trying to load this lot. 1.32 gigabytes is a huge chunk of memory unless you're running something where the memory runs into double figures in gigabytes. So what can you do to allow your computer to get round that? Well the answer in almost all of the DAWs that I've researched lies in what Cubase calls the freeze function. And what it does is it takes your 1.32 gigabytes of memory and doesn't use it. What it does do is it creates an audio render of that performance as it stands with those settings at this moment and creates audio files. And then it plays back the audio file when you play back the song. So you save all that memory but still get the benefit of having your super duper virtual instrument. So let's have a look at how that works. Um, so we've got the session horns loaded up here and in Cubase there's this little button, the freeze instrument channel. If you click on that it says do you want to freeze the instrument only? So your virtual instrument is frozen. You can freeze the instrument and the channel so any effects that you've got on are frozen. It gives you a tail size so that when it renders out the instrument, if there's any reverbs, you can determine how much of that reverb is captured in the render before it chops it off. And there, importantly, unload the instrument when frozen. So we do that.
OK, so it's now frozen the instrument and if we come over here we can see that the contact 5 has gone orange, the edit your instrument is greyed out and the freeze instrument channel icon is now this little orangey colour. So if we just solo that and play it you can hear that it's still the same. OK, one thing I should point out is if you're using a virtual instrument, it's a good idea to let the track play through first so that any automation changes, parameters, or in this case, animation um, that the Session Horns is using gets played into the computer's memory. Otherwise, you can end up with simple static chords, which if all you want is simple static chords is fine. It's a good idea to let the track play through once to let any automation or animation or effects play into memory of the computer. That's a way to save yourself resources. It also obviously increases the headroom available for processing when you're recording. So any really memory intensive effects or instruments, if you freeze the channel, you get the benefit without the overhead. I hope that's all made sense and I hope that it helps. And until next time, you take care of yourselves.